I have A being represented in sine 2's complement by n bits. A n minus 1, A n minus 2, A n minus 3 all the way to A 0. Okay. And therefore, decimal value of this is minus A n minus 1, 2 power n minus 1 plus summation k equal to 0 to n minus 2 a k 2 power k. Okay, this is the value. So, even after the sign extension, we should get back the same value that I have written here. Only then it is a correct representation. I am now going to extend this to n plus m bits. <coughs> I am going to add m more bits now. Okay, that could have, that could be, so it is like in the last case, n was 4, m was also 4. We went from 4 to 8 bit. Okay, so here I am going to write this. A is now, I have to find the n plus m bit representation of this number. What should I do? I take the sign bit. I am going to write that out here now. A n minus 1, A n minus 2 all the way to a0. This is the lower n bits. What is the sign bit? This one. So, I will now extend this same value a n minus 1, a n minus 1 all the way small. Okay. So, just to get you the, the indices right. Okay. This is bit 0. This is bit n minus 1. Right. So, n bits there. This is n, n plus 1 all the way to n plus m minus 1. Okay, I have added m more bits to this. Okay, exactly like we have done here in this case. Right, we have added m more bits to it by taking the sign bit and just copying that m times. Okay. So, now what is the new value of this number? So, let me call this a hat because it is a different number actually. I need to show that a hat and a are the same. Okay. The value of a hat, uh, maybe this I will do in red, a hat equals minus 2 power. How many bits are there now? n plus m. Right. So, this actually is an n plus m bit number. <coughs> this is an n plus m bit number, right? So, this is minus 2 power n plus m minus 1 into a n minus 1 because remember that same a n minus 1 has been repeated m times, okay? Plus, I now have 2 power n plus m minus 2 a n minus 1 plus 2 power n plus m minus 3 a n minus 1. Remember, all these are the same bits, okay? All the way to 2 power n minus 1 a n minus 1. Okay. Remember, in the first representation, the negative sign appeared against this 2 power n minus 1 term, but that is not the sign bit. Now, I repeat this, that is not the sign bit. The sign bit has moved to the n plus mth position. Okay. m plus nth bit. Right. So, then I just continue writing this as summation k equal to 0 to n minus 2 a k 2 power k. Okay, that is the usual thing because the bottom n, uh, n minus 1 bits are basically unaltered, right? That is 0 to a 0 to a n minus 2, it is the same thing. So, the value also does not change. Okay, so this value is already equal to this value. <coughs> the only thing I need to show is that the summation of the other terms basically is just minus a n minus 1, 2 power n minus 1, right? So, what I will do is, I will take this a hat, okay? And then, I am going to take out this 
2 power n minus 1 out. Okay. 2 power n minus 1 a n minus 1. In fact, not just that, I will take this entire term common out. Okay. And you see what I get into <coughs> minus 2 power m. Right, because I have divided by 2 power n minus 1 now plus 2 power m minus 1 plus 2 power m minus 2 all the way to 2 power 0, okay, plus the old value, right, this, this value is unchanged, k equal to 0 to n minus 2 a k 2 power k. Okay, and therefore this is 2 power n minus 1 a n minus 1, okay, into minus 2 power m. Now, this term that you see here is nothing but again a geometric progression. Yeah, it is very good idea for you to go back and revise the geometric progression, geometric progression sum, right, because it will keep coming in this context of powers of 2, right. So, this is nothing but uh, a into r power n minus 1, right, a into r power m minus 1 divided by r minus 1, r is 2 and a is also 1. So, therefore, this is 2 power m minus 1, okay, plus summation k equal to 0 to n minus 2, a k 2 power k, okay. So, then this cancels out, I will get minus 2 power n minus 1 a n minus 1 plus summation k equal to 0 to n minus 2 a k 2 power k, right. Clearly, my a hat, okay, value is identical to my a value as you can see here. And therefore, I will say, hence, theorem is proved. This is a formal proof, right? We have not assumed any specific values for the a case, a0 to a n minus 1. We have just said sign extending it, right? It it just remains unaltered whether a n minus 1 is 0 or not it does not matter right and that is the theorem that we had stated earlier right which is what we proved and you must over time get used to writing such formal proofs also right just enumerating for a specific set of cases and showing that it works is not a proof okay a proof means it's going to work for every single value Okay, so you have to get used to writing such proofs which you would have also seen in maths or you will see in the future math courses as well. Okay, so one important thing therefore is, right, be very careful when we ask you to represent a number in 2's complement. Suppose I say, what is the 2's complement representation of plus 5? Okay. So, the first question you must ask yourself is, how many bits do I need to represent plus 5? What are the minimum number of bits? Okay. Suppose it were an unsigned number. Okay. Suppose plus 5 and I ask you unsigned number, then it is pretty straightforward right 5 is between 0 and 2 power 3 2 power 3 is 8 right we know it's so therefore i need 3 bits right so therefore i i will say in the unsigned representation it's 101 and i could represent this in any number of bits you want even if you want 8 bits i will give you this okay but in signed two's complement you must be very careful here and first ask yourself how many bits do I need because if you have an n bit number 
you can represent minus 2 power n minus 1 to 2 power n minus 1. Okay. So, if I take, so first step is to identify minimum number of bits. Okay. In the signed unsigned case, like I said, it goes, you, if you have n bits, it is 0 to 2 power n minus 1. Okay. Here it is 0 to 2 power n minus 1. It may be, yeah. 2 power n minus 1 with an n bit number. Here it is minus 2 power n, n minus 1, 2, uh, maybe I should say 2, 2. 2 power n minus 1 minus 1. So, you lose one bit already because you are, you know, trying to represent a sign with one of them, right. Therefore, in the sign two's complement number, you will always need that extra bit and you must keep that in mind, okay. So, phi is clearly going to appear if you take the number plus phi, right. It is essentially it lies between, I do not have to say equal to, it lies between minus, let us say n equal to, uh, n equal to 3. Can I say this? Minus 4 to plus, uh, so suppose I say, if n equal to 3, right? Will it, can I represent this in 3 bits? Is the question I am asking, right? If I take 3 bits, any number, um, you know, in 3 bits can be represented as between minus 4 and uh, 2 power 2 minus 1, minus 4 to 3. So, clearly phi lies outside this range implies I need n equal to 4 bits to represent plus phi. So, plus phi lies between minus 8 and plus 7. Now, therefore, I can represent it using 4 bits, okay. So, I have to first write out 4 bits, okay. And how do I fill this? The first bit has to be 0 because it is a positive number. You remember the moment you make that one, it will become a negative, negative number, 0. <coughs> and then I, I write the value of 5, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so effectively, this is what the sine two's complement representation is. Remember, if you say the sine two's complement representation of plus phi is one zero one, it is entirely wrong because the first bit will be treated as a sine bit, and this one will be multiplied by minus two power two. So, it will become minus 2 power 2 plus 2 power 0, which is minus 3, okay. That is the point that you have to be careful about. And therefore, any positive number, please represent it clearly using 0 as the first sign bit. Do not miss that. Likewise, if I ask you, what is the value of minus 5? How do I represent minus 5? Of course, I cannot do it in unsigned numbers right. So, in minus phi, I have to write this as, you know, in a, again, minus phi can be represented with 4 bits, right. Uh, so, how do I write minus phi now? Minus phi, I have to remember, you remember the weighing balance trick that we did, you have to write it as a difference between 2 power, uh, 2 power 3, n minus 1, right. So, I am going to write it as minus 8 plus 3, okay. And therefore, this I can write as minus 8 is, you know, the 2 power 3 bit being 1 and then I write 0, 1, 1. So, this is 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, minus 2 power 3, okay. So, therefore, the value of this number 
minus 5 can be represented as 1, 0, 1, 1. <coughs> okay. Maybe I will do one more example. I will do minus 7. Okay. Minus 7. Now, therefore, the first question you have to ask is how many bits do you need? Okay. Clearly, it cannot be represented using, uh, you know, can I write? No, I will take, I will take minus 11 actually, not even minus 7. I will take minus 11. Okay. So, minus 11 lies between minus 11 is lies between minus 16 and plus 15. Okay. So, that means I need n equal to 5 bits because remember the range is this is 2 power n minus 1. Okay. And this is 2 power n minus 1 minus 1. Okay. So, therefore, I need 5 bits in order to represent minus 11. Now, minus 11 has to be written as a difference from 16 to minus 2 power 6 minus 2 power 4 or minus 16. So, I will write this as minus 16 plus 5. Okay. And therefore, I the representation is minus 16 or I will write this. Phi is 1, 0, 1. Okay. So, I will write this out as 1, 0, 1. Okay. I need 5 bits. So, 0, 1, 0, 1 is the number, the value 5. And then I am going to write, put a 1 here. So, this will effectively correspond to minus 2 power 4. This will effectively correspond to the number 5 and therefore, this will become minus 11. So, the representation in 2's complement of minus 11 is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. So, with that, what we have done is we have, you know, looked at the 2's complement representation quite comprehensively, both intuitively and mathematically. So, uh, we will now use, you know, this 2's complement representation in order to do a lot of, you know, logical operations as well as arithmetic operations going forward. And every time you do a logical operation or you build a circuit, okay, using logic gates to perform a certain operation, you, you should make sure that it is consistent with the decimal operations as well. And I will highlight that more and more as I go through this particular course. Mm -hmm.